Welcome to Spotlight on Migraine, hosted by the Association of Migraine Disorders. Join us for fresh perspectives by medical experts and advocates as we explore the spectrum of migraine and dig deeper into this complex disease. This episode is brought to you in part by our generous sponsor, Lily. Stay tuned as Dr. Stuart Tepper explains key points you need to know about four neuromodulation devices for the treatment of migraine, including Cephaly, the STMS device, GammaCore, and Nerivio. Tepper outlines the differences between each option, including cost, how they are used, who they are best for, and more, helping you and your doctor narrow in on the best fit for you. For more than 25 years, Lilly has been committed to helping people affected by headache, investigating more than a dozen different compounds for the treatment of migraine and cluster headache. Hello and welcome to Spotlight on Migraine. I'm your host, Molly O'Brien. Today we're talking about the latest news in neuromodulation for migraine treatment. I'd like to say hello and welcome to our guest, Dr. Stuart Tepper. He's a professor of neurology. Dr. Tepper, thank you so much for joining us today. Well, thank you for asking me to talk about something I think is very important for patients. We're so excited to have you, and you're a headache specialist, so you have a lot of experience and a lot of knowledge in neuromodulation as well as other headache treatment options. But today we're going to focus specifically on the newest and latest information on neuromodulation. It seems like we keep getting new updates on different devices and different ways that these devices can be used for patients. So it seems that it is possible for patients to find relief in non-invasive ways. Can you tell us how this is possible. These neuromodulation devices are what are referred to as non-invasive. They don't have to be implanted. They're portable. And patients use them in various ways with various programs. They don't have significant side effects. The FDA calls them non-significant risk devices. And they change the way the brain processes pain by various mechanisms from various approaches And one of the advantages of them, besides the fact they don't have side effects, is that when medications have failed, it's often because for whatever reason, we pick the wrong target. A particular medicine targets a particular uh, chemical within the brain. And the advantage of going into the brain and slowly changing the nerves in the brain is that you are affecting targets that we know about, but also targets that we don't know about yet. And so many patients who have had a lack of success with medicines, the medicines have failed one after another, will find that neuromodulation can be helpful. So let's talk about a couple of these devices and the latest information that's behind them. There are only four of them, so it's relatively straightforward. Uh, The first one that was approved is called an external trigeminal stimulator. and it has the it is made by a company called Cephaly, so everybody calls it the Cephaly device, and that is C E F A L Y. And this is a device that is a um, stimulator that is put on the forehead. There's a sticky uh, electrode that goes underneath it, and it ha- the device has a, um, a USB mini USB charger. And once it's on the forehead with a magnet on the uh, electrode. There are two programs for cephaly, and cephaly is FDA cleared both to prevent migraine and to treat migraine acutely. And the device that has both programs is called the cephaly dual device. The cephaly dual device, when one turns on that particular program, it goes on for 20 minutes. It's worn at night for 20 minutes, and it stimulates the uh, nerves on the forehead, the supraocular and supratrochlear nerves, and the stimulus goes into the brain and gradually turns down migraine over many months, over two or three months. Um, And during the 20 minutes that it's worn, the device gradually ramps up the intensity of the treatment, and uh, then it turns off automatically at the end of the 20 minutes. So a dose is 20 minutes nightly. Uh, It also has an acute setting where when a person's going into a severe attack, they can turn on the acute setting for cephaly and it turns on a different program and stays on for an hour and brings the headache down and then turns off automatically. Um, Cephaly costs for the dual device about $550. It's not paid for by any insurance except the VA, to my knowledge, a few government insurances, but that's it. 
So people have to pay out of pocket. Uh, it's ordered online. It requires a provider prescription. Uh, patients go to cephaly.us to do that. And um, the, uh, if they hate the device, they can't stand it, they can return it in 60 days for their money back. Uh, but it really takes three months at least for the preventive treatment to work. So that is cephaly. The second device is called STMS or STMS Mini, and that stands for the, a single pulse transcranial magnetic stimulator. And the STMS device is a big magnet um, smaller than a shoe box, um, but nonetheless pretty big. And it has a charger and patients put it on the back of the head and turn it on and it pulses a magnet that fast. And the, uh, the device, the STMS, is cleared by the FDA for prevention of migraine and for acute treatment of migraine. So it makes it like cephaly in that regard. The preventive uh, program is to pulse the magnet four times in the morning and four times at night. And then the person with migraine can, can supplement with additional pulses if they feel a migraine accelerating during the day. Uh, and the FDA has approved up to 17 pulses in a day. Mm -hmm. So there's quite a lot of flexibility with this and the device delivers the magnet very quickly. It's very convenient. Um, it is only available by rental, you can't buy it. And so there needs to be a form filled out by the provider and a prescription, and then that's faxed into the company. And then um, the patient calls the company to set up the payment regimen. And the way that it currently works is it costs $150 a month to rent for the first three months. And then um, uh, if the person who's using it likes it, and wants to sign up for further uh, prescription for further months, it, it goes up to $250 a month. If they don't like it, uh, they can send it back and get their money back for the three months. So they do have an opportunity to try it out for three months. And if it doesn't work, they, they, they didn't lose anything for that. And it can be a little less than 250 per month if they sign up for a really long time, for example, for a year of rental. Um, and it's, it's very convenient, and as I say, it works both ways. Preventively, with the four pulses twice a day over about three months to see the migraine frequency drop and the intensity, as, and it has been studied in both episodic and chronic migraine for, for prevention. That's the STMS device. Uh, again, almost no insurance coverage whatsoever. So everything out of pocket for these devices. Uh, the third device is a non-invasive vagal nerve stimulator, NVNS, which has the uh, brand name of GammaCore. And it looks a little bit like an old-fashioned Norelco electric razor with two little uh, metal discs on the top. And it's put on the neck above the vagus nerve with a little bit of goop. And it's turned on for two minutes at a, at a cycle. So it... it it uh, activates the vagus nerve uh, for two minutes at a time. And when it's on, the lip on that side twitches so that people know that it's actually working and in the right place. And then the FDA has cleared this device for a number of uses. On the migraine side, it's approved for the acute treatment of migraine with two or three uh, two-minute cycles in a row to terminate an attack. Uh, for cluster headache, the device is approved for the acute treatment of episodic cluster headaches. It didn't work for chronic cluster, it worked for episodic cluster, and there were two studies, and they both showed the same thing, that it could stop attacks of episodic cluster headache, but not of chronic cluster headache. Uh, usually three cycles of two minutes uh, administered uh, when a, patient is, a person is going into a cluster headache. But it also turns out that it can be used on top of conventional cluster medicine to prevent cluster. And in a study that was done in Europe, it showed that if some, a patient did uh, two or three cycles of this vagus nerve stimulation twice a day on top of 
conventional pr cluster preventive medicine, that that reduced the cluster attacks further and reduced additional medicines that people would take for cluster, like oxygen or triptans. Uh, so the FDA cleared it as an, what's called an adjunctive uh, treatment for prevention of cluster headache, meaning that it's added to what is uh, usually used. And um, it, it, was, it was cleared for both the prevention of episodic cluster, but also of chronic cluster. So it's actually the only treatment that we have that has any FDA approval for prevention of chronic cluster headache on top of our, our usual treatments. The non-invasive vagal nerve stimulator uh, is, is not paid for by any insurance except the VA. And currently the way that it's um, uh, made available is that it costs close to $600 a month to recharge the non-invasive vagal nerve stimulator, which has made it very difficult to get for anybody, for anybody to afford uh, for acute treatment of migraine, preventive treatment of cluster, or acute treatment of episodic cluster. Uh, there may be a change in how it is marketed, uh, but right now it's the cost has been extremely uh, prohibitive in terms of uh, people being able to access it. The last device that uh, is FDA cleared is called a Nerivio device or a remote electrical neuromodulation device. This device is um, a, a, a patch that is sticky and put on the arm with a little tourniquet that holds it in place. And a, an app is downloaded on a smartphone. And a person at the beginning of a migraine turns on the patch and the pat and the idea is to set the patch so it buzzes the arm in advance so that you know that it's not going to be painful. If you just take it up, you can turn on the intensity and then bring it down just below where it's painful so it's not painful and turn it on and it turns on for 45 minutes and works through a reflex in the brain to terminate migraine within two hours, especially if they turn it on within the first hour of the attack. Works better if they turn it on in the first hour of the attack. Again, no side effects. The cost is $99 for one of these patches, and each patch contains enough juice to treat 12 separate migraine attacks. So it's $99 to treat 12 attacks, and most patients say, well, I'm willing to try that, $99 to treat 12 migraines, and I'll know whether it works or not if I use it in the first hour of an attack. Uh, Nerivio, therefore, is probably the most accessible of the neuromodulation devices, as well as being the newest one. Um, and, and unlike the other three, Nerivio is only approved for the acute treatment of migraine. Remember, the vagus nerve stimulator gamma core is approved for acute treatment of migraine, not prevention of migraine, but also acute and preventive treatment of cluster. And then the first two devices, the cephaly and the SDMS, they're, they're cleared for both the prevention of migraine and the acute treatment of migraine. So Dr. Tepper, these devices range in price, they range in access for patients, and they range in what they can be used for. They also range in the amount of time that you can actually use them for. So uh, Nerivio, you use it for 45 minutes. Uh, it looks like the Gamma Core you use in a two minute cycle, and then the Cephaly you use for a certain amount of time. I'm wondering when patients, if they actually obtain these devices and then they're using them, depending on which device, what can you be doing? So for the Cephaly, you put it on, you have it for, um, I believe, what did you say? Uh, you have it on for 20 minutes. Do patients need to be lying down when they're using these devices? Can they be sitting up? watching TV? Can they be walking around the house? Uh, depending on where they're at in their migraine attack or if they're using it for preventive treatment, how do patients use these devices and what is their demeanor like when they are using them? Let me tell you how I counsel patients on cephaly to begin with. Um, uh, when people turn on the prevention uh, modality, the program for cephaly initially, it can be very painful. And so, because it ramps up over the 20 minutes. And some people don't tolerate the full dose immediately. So we actually tell people to ramp it up slowly. If they turn it on 
and let it ramp up for five minutes. They can press the button and it'll stay on, but it won't ramp up any further uh, for the additional 20 minutes. They ramp it up for five minutes and press the button for every night for a week, but keep it on for the full 20 minutes, then to 10 minutes every night for a week, uh, then to 15 minutes, and finally over a month, they can ramp it up to the full dose of 20 minutes, letting it go the whole time. And when one takes time to get used to it and learn how to gradually uh, tolerate the ramping up, almost everybody can tolerate it if they do it slowly. Once they get to the uh, to the regular dose, most patients report that it makes them feel relaxed. And that's why we recommend that it be done in the evening. And I say to people, look, if, if you fall asleep with it on, it's going to turn off automatically. It doesn't burn people. It doesn't have risks. Uh, but we do re recommend using it in the evening. And once they get used to it, uh, they can um, watch TV. They can walk around. They can do whatever they want. Um, and um, patients but initially we tell them you may not want to try to walk around while you're first getting used to it because it is a very odd sensation that you feel on the forehead. With the STMS device, the pulsing of the magnet is very quick. I mean, it takes about 20 seconds to reboot it. They, they, uh, they pulse, reboot, pulse, reboot, pulse, reboot, pulse, reboot, done. So um, that's the easiest one and the fastest one to use. I mean, they're not going to be watching TV while they do it, probably. Um, but and it's a it's a little bit heavy to be carrying around, but people do put it in their pocketbooks. Um, and the charge lasts quite a while, um, up to a month. So um, it's less of an issue in terms of what you're doing with the um, with the STMS device. The gamma core device, although you would think it would be quick, it's not that quick because you got to do a two minute cycle, then it takes a while to reboot, then you do another two minute cycle, then it takes a while to reboot, then you do another two minute cycle. So by the time you're done, it's 10 to 15 minutes of downtime every time uh, people use it. Um, usually people, you know, you could be doing something during that time, you could be watching TV and it's going to twitch your neck while you watch it it's or 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 but you will be holding it with one hand and so there's a little bit limited um opportunity to do other things with it and it's a little less convenient than the stms uh, or the cephaly or the nerivio and it also requires goop on the neck each time it's applied so you have to have at least some time to clean that off as well um, the nerivio device is very convenient because it can be put on the arm and turned on and you roll the sleeves down on your arm, go about your business. And people don't know that it's on. And I mean, pe other people don't know that it's, uh, that it's in place or that it's working for a particular person. There's no limitations on what you do. Obviously you don't take a shower or go swimming with it on, but um, otherwise there's really not any limitation to using the Nerivio device. And it is discreet of the four non-invasive neuromodulation devices. It's the most, discreet as well as the least expensive. Okay, thank you for going over those with us in terms of in terms of how you can use them and uh, what you can be doing while you're using them if you decide to use those for treatment options. Now, if someone's interested in a neuromodulation device, obviously cost might play a role and what they want to use our neuromodulation device can also play a role. But if you're looking at all four devices that are out there, how can one decide between the four devices? What might work for them? Well, one decision is what's the frequency of the migraines. So if somebody has an attack a week, uh, even a disabling attack a week, Nerivio probably would be the way to go because uh, one $99 fee is going to work for three months and they just attack, uh, do a, a treat once a week and maybe not need their triptan or their as needed treatment. If they have chronic migraine, and they can afford it, the best data are for uh, the STMS device, because that was specifically tested in both episodic and chronic migraine. Most of my patients can't afford the STMS device. And so that leaves the cephaly device. So if they have chronic migraine, we usually start with the cephaly device. And for those patients who want both acute and preventive treatment, most patients start with cephaly again because of cost and access. So um, 
that pretty much sums up how I approach it. And almost nobody, unfortunately, can afford the Gamma Core when we really, so the first question I ask is, are you a veteran? And uh, if the, um, if they have cluster, then we try really hard to see if there's a way they can try it out for cluster because it's so disabling, but it's hard to get patients to be able to afford it. Yeah, that is tough. It's interesting to see the variety in treatment options available with these neuromodulation devices and the cost in what's out there. So, and you said that in all four of these devices, insurance doesn't cover any of them. Is that correct? I've never seen insurance coverage for any of them. Which is interesting. And do you look, does it seem like in the healthcare world that neuromodulation devices are not the first line of treatment for patients? If that's the case, why is that? And do you think it can change? Yeah, it's, a, it's one of the great disappointments that payers are resistant to covering these. And they make all kinds of excuses. And all of the excuses are inexcusable in my judgment. I mean, it's really something that we, that patients and providers need to lobby about. Uh, one technical difference between neuromodulation devices and medications is that neuromodulation devices are cleared by the FDA while medications are approved by, by the FDA. However, the neuromodulation devices, many of them have superb randomized controlled trials with sham. Uh, rated extremely high in terms of the quality of the studies done by reputable journals like our Journal of Neurology. And despite the quality of the evidence and despite the fact that most of these are less than the cost less than the monoclonal antibodies, uh, in, insurers remain uh, absolutely resistant to covering them without any legitimate reason in my judgment. Uh, they, are, they don't know what they don't know. They're not interested in finding out. And it's, uh, it's really a shame. It's a real problem. Um, so I personally think we all should be lobbying our payers uh, continuously about this and bringing it up. I think that neuromodulation should be integrated into, um, my, into headache treatment. And there are some patients who want to use neuromodulation first. There are some patients who want to neuro use neuromodulation as an add-on to medication. There are some who don't want to deal with it until all other medication options have been theoretically um, um, failed, uh, where the previous medicines have failed, multiple medicines have failed. We use neuromodulation in pregnancy. Uh, the STMS device is approved in the UK for use in pregnancy. So uh, both F STMS, I, mean, I should say STMS and Nerivio and Gamma Corn uh, and uh, uh, Cephaly, none of which has been officially cleared by the FDA for use in pregnancy. We can't see any reason why people can't use them in pregnancy. Uh, and especially the SDMS device, which has actually been explored by the UK regulatory people. So again, there's a time when we should be using neuromodulation. Older patients who have multiple medical uh, illnesses that prevent them from using our medications, they're good candidates for neuromodulation. When we teach residents in neurology, uh, when we teach our colleagues, we try to include the neuromodulation devices by their level of evidence uh, integrated into a, um, an approach to the appropriate treatment of headache patients. And um, the cost and the payers are the biggest problem. Dr. Tepper, can you tell us about the efficacy of these neuromodulation devices? Well, it's a little bit of a problem because of apples and oranges, and we try to convert the data for some of the earlier studies into numbers that can be compared to our medical treatments, our medication treatments. Cephaly, for example, had two endpoints in their preventive trial. One was the reduction of mean monthly migraine days, which is similar to what we look at for the monoclonal antibodies. The other was the 50% responder rate, meaning were there, uh, what percentage of patients had at least a 50% reduction in their mean monthly migraine days. And it was only significant for the second endpoint, not for the first endpoint. Um, so that doesn't look as strong for efficacy numbers as our traditional medications. 
and the acute study for cluster for uh, cephaly rather in migraine used uh, what's called a visual analog scale where from one to 100 with uh, the patients were asked whether they improved using the cephaly device and they did but that's not the same as asking people whether they're pain free at two hours the way we do with acute medications and i always tell patients that neuromodulation devices um, they neuromodulation is not the same as neurotermination so sometimes these devices modulate pain downward without getting people completely pain free and people are very happy with that because they don't have side effects from that the stms device in the study that led to the fda clearance for prevention studied people with from four to 24 headache days per month so from episodic to chronic migraine and the magnitude of drop in monthly migraine days was pretty similar to what one sees with monoclonal antibodies across time but that was not a placebo controlled trial or a sham controlled trial they used a statistical sham uh, to make the argument to the fda um, in the study that used stms to terminate migraine with aura uh, they evaluated pain freedom at two hours, and it was effective versus a sham device for that. A little bit less than a triptan, but, um, but still in the ballpark. For the gamma core device, there was a large Italian study that evaluated uh, the non-invasive vagal nerve stimulator for acute treatment of migraine, and it did not statistically uh, result in a pain-free response at two hours but it did result in pain freedom at one hour and at later endpoints and at headache relief at two hours. And the FDA felt that was good enough with a high enough quality sham controlled study to uh, clear it for the acute treatment of migraine. But you could argue that it didn't actually hit the, end, the primary endpoint of pain freedom at two hours compared to placebo. Um, the Nerivio device, for pain freedom at two hours in a sham control trial really looked a lot like a triptan. So it, it uh, achieved pain freedom in over a third of patients at two hours uh, compared to, uh, to the sham device. Now the difference comparing to a medication in acute medicine is that the patients didn't all wait to a moderate to severe level of pain to treat. Many of them treated earlier to achieve that pain freedom, but they did achieve the pain freedom. And uh, they also um, uh, reduced the, what's referred to in the biz as the most bothersome symptom where people were able to choose dislike of, from dislike of light, dislike of noise or nausea, what was bothering them the most at the beginning of an attack. And the Nerivio did clear that in a statistically significant way compared to uh, sham at two hours. Also, interestingly, in an open label study of Nerivio, people who continue to use it often, more often than not, chose to use it rather than acute medication. Uh, so it does suggest that when it works for people, it works similarly to a triptan, works better if taken early, and uh, many people choose it over oral medications. Now that's a quick look at efficacy. It's not exactly uh, the same apples and orange, uh, apples and apples, and comparing the endpoints, but enough to give us a feel for the uh, relative efficacy of these devices. I'm interested, Dr. Tepper, when you're looking at efficacy and you're looking at patients. Obviously, we know that migraine patients are different and their attacks are all different. But can patients use neuromodulation devices in conjunction with other therapies and find success? Absolutely, and we do that all the time. So we, we, if they can afford a particular neuromodulation device, uh, we, add, we can add um, a monoclonal antibody or vice versa. I actually took care of a patient yesterday who uh, in the days before the monoclonal antibodies had been through every uh, conceivable preventive medicine and these medicines had uniformly failed. And so I put her on cephaly and she did very well and she felt like it had made a very big difference for her. And then I added a monoclonal antibody to the cephaly because she was eligible, because all these medicines had failed, and she said the combination had been life-changing. And it was both. It, she said it had to be both the cephaly plus the monoclonal antibody. So yes, we use them together in the patients that can afford them. 
And that's so promising to hear someone say it changed their life. I think those words resonate with all of us who have migraine and probably for providers like yourself, that has to be so rewarding. I was going to say it sure resonated with me. <laughs> I wrote it in the chart and quoted it. <laughs> Oh, that, that does bring some joy. That's really exciting. So as we continue to look at recent updates with neuromodulators and neuromodulation devices, I'm interested to see, do you think that providers will begin to get more comfortable with these devices uh, as they possibly become more popular or as we get more information and they get approved or as you said, as they get cleared uh, for different treatment options? I think it's all access, I'm sorry to say. I mean, we teach at every uh, American Headache Society meeting, every Diamond Headache Clinic meeting, every, uh, you know, we, we try all the time to put these devices into the acute and preventive treatment uh, lectures for our colleagues, bring them up, and many uh, providers are unwilling to go through the gymnastics involved in getting the prescriptions to whatever company they need. And, uh, and many patients are, cannot afford them. And it's a real shame. And I think the likelihood of uptake is directly related to uh, payer uh, access. And um, I'm hoping that some of our um, patient organizations and ad advocacy groups will be more um, aggressive in, in lobbying for this. I mean, it's really a shame that FDA cleared devices that have proven effective in randomized controlled, sham controlled trials are, and are relatively inexpensive compared to designer medications are not being covered. And I hope with more stories, like one of the patients that you treated, that it was life-changing. I hope that we can start to see more advocacy for access to these type of devices. And that wraps up this episode of Spotlight on Migraine. I'd like to thank our guest, Dr. Stuart Tepper. Until next time, I'm Molly O'Brien. Thank you for tuning into Spotlight on Migraine. For more information on migraine disease, please visit migrainedisorders.org.